First to Hong Kong, where pro-democracy activist Joshua Wong has now been arrested. A post on his Twitter account said that Wong was arrested while he was reporting to the central police station. His arrest is related to his participation in an unauthorized assembly on the 5th, on the 5th of October last year, as per the statement. He has also been accused of violating an anti-mask law. The Hong Kong government invoked a colonial era emergency law last year, which banned wearing masks at demonstrations. Now, the activists say that the government wanted to make it difficult for the protesters to remain anonymous. Recently, a Hong Kong court rejected Joshua Wong's challenge to his disqualification from the district elections. Meanwhile, the Hong Kong government is cracking down on the media as well. A new definition of media representative has been applied to the police protocol. This basically allows the authorities to discredit the journalists. Authorities will only recognize media personnel registered under the Government News and Media Information Center. Joining us live on the broadcast this minute is our correspondent Richard Kimber from Hong Kong. Hi Richard, tell us more about the sequence of events that led to Joshua Wong's arrest. We believe uh, he was arrested while he was on his way to the central police station. That's right, Joshua Wong is required to report twice weekly to the police station under conditions that relate to other charges that he also faces uh, in previous months where he's been charged in other cases relating to protest events. During one of those visits to the police station today, he was arrested for another charge, this time in relation to an unauthorized protest event that took place in October of last year. And part of that arrest also relating to the fact that he was wearing a mask at that protest one day after masks had been officially banned by the government because the government was trying to crack down on protesters wearing masks as a means of concealing their identity. They said that because of mask wearing, protesters were more likely to become violent on the streets because they felt they were protected from CCTV cameras. So Joshua Wong arrested again. He said that this will not change in any way his determination to be an activist against the government and against the Chinese uh, national security law here. But nevertheless, a third charge now filed against this very prominent pro-democracy activist here in Hong Kong. Right. He's also been accused of violating the anti-mask law, which uh, the activists have been alleging was invoked to make sure that they can no longer remain anonymous while they participate in those pro-democracy agitations. That's right. That law was highly controversial because in order to pass it so quickly, the government had to invoke a colonial era ordinance to get that pushed through the Legislative Council without any opposition. Um, that was really why so many protesters came out the very next day onto the streets, because they wanted to oppose the idea that the government could use this type of ancient uh, power to pass through law. Um, that was actually then overturned by the High Court one month later, who said that it was unconstitutional that the government had actually used this power. But then over in April, it was then overturned again in the government's favor by the Court of Appeal. So a very controversial decision back in October that had lots of legal ramifications in the months that followed. But the police today charging Joshua Wong over an unauthorized assembly uh, at that exact protest event, and secondarily, as I say, charging him again for wearing a mask at that event. The government is also cracking down on the media. A new definition of media representative has been applied to the police protocol. Tell us more about that and how would that really impact uh, the reportage of the journalists and any reaction coming in from your colleagues on that front as well? Yes, well, the police say this is very simple. It's a long overdue process that they've been needing to enact because they say it's increasingly difficult for them, especially during street protest events these days, to identify who is a genuine journalist and who is not. And so for that reason, they've said that now all journalists must be registered with a government department. This has caused uproar among the media community and the pro-democracy community who say that this is just a step towards what they fear may be government-approved journalism and the end of freedom of speech. And they say that it may mean it's very difficult 
difficult now for freelance journalists, for student journalists, and for local journalists who may be accredited locally but not internationally to actually be able to cover the news properly here at all. So this has caused, again, a lot of concern here about the future of Hong Kong's freedoms. The police trying to play it down and saying this is nothing more than a simple piece of admin to help them do their jobs more effectively. Richard Kimber getting us those details and perspectives from Hong Kong. Thanks very much for joining us for the moment.